Okay, so in this video we're going to take a look at the fixation system, so the way the uh, new multi-material upgrade will be attached to the printer, and also we are going to take a look at the merger uh, and where I am uh, on this uh, part of the project. So um, right now what you can see is uh, the, uh, let's say, first version of the fixation system that I'm currently um, on so uh, this bar is basically represents um, the printer frame uh, on which uh, you're gonna let's say clip the uh, multi-material upgrade uh, so the principle is really easy so um, you have the two holes on the top where you can place in screws to hold the, the uh, multi-material upgrade and uh, how it clamps to the uh, printer is really simple. You have two screws that come in this way. Uh, you have, let's say, a weight uh, retention mechanism for these screws, uh, basically to not uh, into the uh, plastic part. And uh, you're going to push a plastic um, rectangle against the um, frame uh, and the simple purpose of that is so that you have a larger um, contact surface and also so that you don't scratch your frame with like screws uh, right onto the aluminum which would be problematic so uh, now let's take a look at the printed result okay so this is uh, the result uh, printed uh, it printed properly, as you can see I've already assembled one of the screws, but it's really easy. You take a knot and you place it into the appropriate hole, and then you place the screw in. So the holes, I could make them a little bit bigger because the purpose is not to like thread the screw in, but I it still works perfectly, it's just going to be a bit harder to um, assemble it but I will uh, make it larger because you don't need the, the plastic frame to hold the screw in. You just need it um, to go through. You don't need to hold it because you have uh, the nut right here which is going to uh, hold the screw in place and um, actually push the, uh, the um, fixation onto the frame. So as you can see, and you can simply tighten it as much as you want with those two screws. Um, I haven't printed the uh, little plastic part on there yet, but you get the point and uh, it should work perfectly. But this is not a really important pa part, it's simply uh, a fixation system, so there is nothing special about this. Now what we're going to take a look at is the merger, which uh, here is really important in this project, because uh, it... Um, is most likely the place uh, where it might fail if we have uh, some design uh, issues. Okay, so now let's take a look at the uh, merger. Those, uh, the principle was that um, the first thing I did is I printed um, a slightly smaller merger, so the bands were uh, more aggressive, but okay, please focus. Uh, yeah, so the um, the bands were more aggressive, uh, so it was uh, causing too much friction on the cable, so it was not running smoothly. So what I did next is so increase the size, so you can have bands that are uh, less aggressive, uh, and this uh, one worked well in terms of how small I can make it uh, without creating friction problems. Um, now, as you may know, uh, 3D printing has some problems, including that the surface will not be perfectly flush and uh, since I want as uh, little friction as possible what I'm going to do is I'm going to have um, PTFT tube inserts uh, inside the uh, model um, because PTFT tubes uh, are more accurate and uh, also uh, more adapted uh, to let the filament pass through without any friction so basically you have uh, the PTFT tube that is inserted in it, and of course you can have you cannot have a, a single PTFT tube that runs all the way through. So uh, they stop at about here. I, I think you can see through the the print. Uh, they stop right about here, 
and here is the merging power which is um, fully 3D printed um, so uh, you have as like the, the, the part where you can have uh, more friction than the bottom tube system is uh, reduced to its smallest because of these uh, PTFT tube inserts. Um, now on the other end uh, there's of course going to be a PTFT tube coming out um, but here you can see the hole is made a bit larger because there's one thing is that you don't want the PTFT tube to be able to disconnect otherwise just the filament is going to push and then is going to push the PTFE tube out and it's not going to print so what you do is you add these uh, these uh, what are they called? let me check okay so yes we're going to add those uh, pneumatic fittings so the basic principle is that you can slide the PTFE tube in but if you don't touch uh, and press the blue port it won't be able to come out so it is held in place uh, firmly and that's exactly what we want so what we're going to do is simply after the print um, you screw that in so I'm going to make the hole a little bit better maybe even 3D print a thread so that it goes in straight because right now I'm threading it into plastic but yeah you, you place it in and now at the end of the um, part you have this that can hold the PTFE tube in place and it won't go away and it will uh, keep the thing um, secure. So um, this uh, works um, so in the design but there is a slight problem so uh, let me jump uh, into Cura to show you what I'm talking about. Okay so right now we're in Cura, I've loaded the file and we will simply place it down. This is the way I printed it in the first time. So the first time. So now let's see. Okay, I have previews so that we can have the layer view that I can explain the problem I have, which I will fix um, in the following days. So let's try. I'm going to try to show it to you. So it begins from the bottom, and um, right there, there is absolutely no problem. Just perfect. Uh, there's nothing that a printer cannot do. Uh, maybe these layers are a bit small, but it shouldn't cause too many problems. And it didn't cause too many problems. But here's where the um, problem happens, because this is, you have the same pattern on the top, so it kind of prints in midair all the way here. And this adds um, some filament in places where you don't want any. So uh, the tubes here are getting um, clogged uh, by the filament which is not being printed properly. So I'll just need to modify the design so that you don't have these um, little things going all the way over there. Uh, I will see how I'm, I can do it, but this is what I'm going to have to do if I want it to, to work properly. Um, now there is uh, no other problem uh, printing wise uh, so I'm going to also going to show you what I'm going to add next um, which is uh, a way to detect if there is filament that is actually being loaded. Okay so um, as you may or may not know the uh, original uh, multimaterial upgrade has a sensor to know if the filament has been loaded correctly so uh, since I still want to keep uh, that feature because it's going to help a lot uh, if there are uh, any clogs in the uh, in the murder um, is uh, to add the uh, they, they what they do is they add an inductive uh, proximity sensor and what they do is simply place it in the tube, uh, place a metal ball um, right under it at a distance where it does not activate and bridge. And once the cable passes in, it pushes the ball which goes up, triggers uh, the uh, sensor, and this way you can know if the filament has been properly um, loaded. So, now, this is a decent option uh, in our case we would simply have to like make kind of uh, a, 
cylinder, go right there, place a metal ball, set it pushes. You may see that I have a, quite a big one compared to what the one they use, but it doesn't change much. Um, but um, in the same way that uh, you can use auto bail leveling um, or some switches uh, to know the boundaries of your printer, um, in that case I think that I could use a simple switch. So uh, this would make the cost. Uh, so this would make the entire thing a lot cheaper, and uh, I don't think that it would have any impact because there is basically almost as much friction uh, from the cable coming in right there this way and pushing the switch um, compared to uh, having simply the uh, the filament push a ball which goes against this and activates it. And this makes the whole thing way cheaper and also smaller, as you can see. So the way I'm going to do it is um, maybe extend that section a little bit, place it uh, in a way that it goes um, right through the uh, the uh, filament so segment. And once the filament passes, it pushes against the switch, and uh, we know if it has been loaded properly. So um, and now you may think, yeah, but it, if you go the other way, isn't it going to like grab this little part here? here? Uh, no, it's not going to do that. I've already tried it, and it doesn't cause much friction when it passes. So uh, this is what I'm going to do in the next few days, and I will update you probably on this uh, part of the project next week. Um, I'm still waiting for all the electronics to come because they're coming from China and this is taking a bit more time. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching the video.